Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. <laughs> I hope the audio sounds okay. It's actually the uh, first time I've ever used this helmet, which I'll explain in a second. Um, and it sounds different even to me speaking in here, <laughs> which is something I'm really gonna have to get used to uh, because it's the the other only ever helmet I've vlogged in, moto vlogged in, uh, was my HJC, which has been retired. Uh, what we're doing today is we're doing a Q&A video, a patron Q&A video while we just explore roads. Um, I, I meant to go out here and go left down the road ages ago uh, that I haven't done yet, so we're going to do that. See what it brings us. Because uh, I haven't actually ridden, on, or driven or ridden or cycled on this road in uh, about 10 years, I would say. It's been a long time. Um, so before we stop and get to some of the, the questions, um, why, <laughs> why am I wearing a different helmet? Well, the other day, I was uh, riding from work to Freeman Motorcycles to pick up the bearings for the CBF, which I did, uh, successfully, and they're successfully in the bike now, which is great. But what happened along the way was, I came around a corner, and uh, not, like, not, no, nah, it, was, it was a lot, lot less tight than this. But it was a corner like this, basically, someone coming around that way. There was a car ahead of me, and, uh young fella came around in his car anyway, lost control as it was a slippy day and hit the wall on the far side of the road which then shot him back across the road and he, I mean he missed my back wheel by like <laughs> it was not very far <laughs> of course I had no cameras on because that would have been far too good of luck but anyway, um, so he shot back across the road, missed me by not very much at all and um, absolutely smashed his car to smithereens so he was he was okay happily anyway the driver of the car was fine which is obviously good doggos stone doggos uh, which is obviously good and i obviously ran back to check was he okay uh, because when i say the car was in smithereens i didn't take any pictures or anything which uh, in hindsight i should have done because I don't know, the car was the car was in bits, it was absolutely destroyed. Oh that's cool. Probably a private residence. Um and anyway, and during his crash something hit me in the helmet and I like I knew it hit me pretty hard, but I was okay, I was fine, you know, I, I got lucky, it didn't um it didn't do any major damage, uh, which was nice. Uh, other than my helmet, so it actually the vents on the HJC, I'll put up some pictures if I remember to right now. It smashed one of those off, so the plugs the plugs didn't come out. It just sheared them. Um, so I was actually really lucky with where the whatever it was hit me in the head because it really did no damage at all to my brain. <laughs> and I mean, if that had hit me in the visor or something, it could have been a different story. So I'm I am not upset that my helmet's gone. To be honest, it did its job, uh, even if it did just shear the bolt off. Oh, I know where we're coming out. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's why my helmet's gone. It, it saved my head, it did its job. Uh, it just sheared off a chunk. But the main thing is I'm fine, the driver of the car was fine, so everything is fine. Uh, sorry about the screen on the Magna, by the way. It's, uh, it's actually a, it's a really nice screen for winter, so I put it on in winter because it keeps me a bit warmer. Anyway, to get to the patron Q&A, I remember one of them. It's a cool old place. It used to be a nothing thing, and it's still a nothing thing, and I don't know why I even pointed it out, but anyway. Anyway, question one, sorry. Uh, this one comes from uh, Lewis, Lewis Malato, on Patreon. And uh, he, it's a triple barrel question. Number one was, is the Magna still alive? Which, uh, I'm hoping this uh, display of Magna-ing answers your question. And the reason, to be honest, the reason it doesn't make many appearances in videos is just because the CBF is so good at doing everything <laughs> that it gets used a lot because, you know, I have, I have my luggage space. With this, with this bike, even if I'm just going into town to, to grab some milk, which I usually would use this bike for, um, it means I have to put on... Where are you going now? Hello. It means I have to put on, like, a backpack and stuff. Whereas with the CBF to carry all the... I have not ridden this road yet. With the CBF to carry the um, cameras and stuff, it's just, it's a lot easier because you just put them in the top box. So that's why, that's why this bike doesn't make too many appearances anymore. 
Um, nothing wrong with it. I still absolutely love riding the thing, which I do. Um, I, I ride it quite a lot, just not on camera, I suppose, if that answers your question. By quite a lot, I mean like short trips. I don't put huge mileage onto this um, for reasons. <laughs> I don't, I, again, no real reason. It's just, just doesn't happen that way. Okay, that was a boring road too. I need to find somewhere interesting to stop. Um, then the other one uh, from Lewis was, is toasters, uh, update and toaster CB500. And this is a question that came from um, another patron as well, Classic. So to address it, there it has been no progress on the CB500. I have parts for it um, and there's multiple reasons, but basically other things took priority this year. Toaster doesn't actually have a bike license yet, even a learner one. Um, so it's not really like a priority for her or me to get that bike on the road right now. There was other things to spend money on and unfortunately money is finite. Um, but it, it will happen at some point unless something else happens. plan would have been to have the CB500 done by summer um, because I wanted to use it myself as well as give toaster lessons on it. But you gotta, you, you have to flex with the times I suppose. You have to, to flex with what happens. Um, everything is always changing. If, if you go into life, in my opinion, expecting everything to, to go to plan, to go to the one plan anyway, uh, you're in for a hard time, whereas if you go in and you have the ability, I suppose, to dynamically shift your expectations and know what you're doing on a weekly basis even, you know, I think you're a lot better off. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like plans. <laughs> plans are, are something I like. I like having some form of structure in a way that it helps me to, to, keep, to keep focused on the things that are important to me, I suppose. Is it something that I'm gonna just not finish? Uh, no, I'm gonna finish that in some form or another at some point in my life. Um, it just might not be as soon as I wanted it or as soon as other people wanted it or as soon as other people expected it. Um, I do apologize if it was something that you were personally kind of looking forward to, but at the same time, I can only do so many things at once. Uh, unfortunately, due to the full-time job, you never know. If I uh, if I ever make it as like a full-time YouTuber, <laughs> then maybe all that stuff uh, will take a, a front-row seat, and I'll be able to do everything um, all at once. Which, to be honest, I would absolutely love just to, to get that out there. I love these roads, though, just to come out, even for a blast. Like, I, I mean, I'm only going to have ridden by the time I get home, like maybe 40 kilometers. But it doesn't matter, it just, it, it makes me happy to be out on this bike with a bit of sunshine in October, <laughs> just, I don't know, it just makes my day, it makes my day every time. I love, the, I love this bike, I absolutely love this bike. Now these gates, this is where I wanted to stop because these gates are, um, I'm pretty certain they're just like, you know, a farm or an entrance to a farm, but huge big pillars that are always looking posing to me and every time I ride past them oops I just punched my camera every time I ride past them I mean to like stop and have a look oh kickstand would be an idea how sinky are you not that sinky okay cool so to answer the rest of uh, the questions let's get out my my phone I suppose try cross the road without dying Okay, so the rest of the questions from Classic. Um, he said, like Lewis, I'd like to know what developments have been with Toaster CB, so I think I've answered that. Uh, also, are you going to be heavily into the track days next year? Will you see a hel healthy amount of road-based vids too? I'm guessing something has to give one way or the other. Um, absolutely, something would have to give um, one way or the other, but to be honest, I don't think I would be doing as much track days next year um, for multiple reasons and again I'll get to the patron only answer to that question in a second because there's just some stuff I don't want to share to the the wider public yet um, But patrons, you know, they get the extra access folks, um, but to be honest Obviously if you've been following the, the channel Through Instagram and um, you'll have seen because I don't know will that video will be out yet before this one and um, you'll have seen that I was in Scotland on a road trip recently and if you were to ask me which one I prefer, the, the Scottish road trip or the, the track days, I honestly, I couldn't, I, I couldn't honestly answer you because I absolutely love both. But 
I think a lot of that is honestly the the group of people I, I do them with. Obviously, I'm very lucky um, to be in a in a community, I suppose. And the fact is that everyone is everyone is sound. I've yet to meet a person I don't really like up there, which is great. Um, <laughs> I mean, plenty of those in other walks of life, but. And obviously then the, the travel group I went with to Scotland was just brilliant crack. Um, everyone was nice and laid back and no one no one got too serious about anything, even when, you know, wheel bearings collapsed and whatnot. And you, you need that. You need a little bit of that um, in reality. So um, to, to, answer, to answer the question, um, it's going to be a healthy balance of both if I can do that. So then we have some more questions from uh, the Bolt Hole Biker and give him a look on YouTube. He does have his own channel that I also uh, am subscribed to and watch. Um, I would highly recommend giving him a look. And he asks, um, what is your favorite YouTube channel, motorbikes or otherwise? Who is your favorite motor vlogger? I won't be offended if you don't say me. Have you been recognized at any motorcycle events? And if so, do you, did you love it? Your channel is growing well, deservedly so. If Is your ultimate aim to eventually switch from doing a proper job for a living to making a living from being the gorilla biker? Assuming you answer yes, the last question was your estimated subscriber level aim for you to be able to make the switch. And then number six, dream motorcycle. Um, so let's do these one by one. What is your favorite YouTube channel, motorbikes or otherwise? That's a tough one. Um, but I think my, my current favorite, and just because I kind of, I, I see them and it's a lot of the, the quality level is something I would love to do and, and the storytelling level is Gears and Gasoline. They've been around a long time uh, online and, and Sharp Ben is currently very sick in hospital. So um, shout out to him. I hope he, I hope he can get well soon, Ben. But they, they would probably be my favorite channel just because their production level is brilliant. Their ability to storytell is brilliant. They have cool cars, they do cool events, they do road trips. It's kind of it's kind of like what I'd like my channel to be with bike stuff because you know that's their one failing is they don't do enough bike stuff. <laughs> Sorry gears and gasoline. That's the one that's the one thing. So that would be the answer to that one is um gears and gasoline. Who is your favorite motor vlogger? I won't be offended if you don't say me. That is a hard one because I I honestly and all joking aside, I'm not just saying this, right? I honestly couldn't pick a single favorite I, I really 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 couldn't um i think for me there's just too many good channel good motor vlogging channels um definitely a big channel that i have followed for a long time um is baker x, baker x derek you know suburban delinquent um shatry surgeon is also oh no oh no it's okay it's such a spider web uh, Shay Tree Surgeon is another uh, motor vlogger who I watch a lot of. Um, Brian636, I like, I love watching Hood Eats. Um, Hood Eats is a big, big favorite of mine as well. Um, who else? 44 Teeth. 44 Teeth are brilliant. Love watching their stuff. Um, I'm just trying to think who I watch a lot of. Um, Monkey Butt. I watch pretty much all his videos. Uh, Hachui. Um, the list, go, the list goes on. Honestly, there's, there's too many that I watch all of their videos to say that I have a favorite. Um, who am I forgetting? I'm definitely forgetting one who I watch literally every single video he puts out. Hippo drones. <laughs> there you go. There's another. So, I mean, there's there's too many. There are genuinely are too many to name. And I know I'm forgetting loads of people who I watch. I watch a lot. Actually, just just to just to scroll through it real quick. Um, yeah, so like I said, Shaytree Surgeon, Hatchewy, Do It Dan, The Skid Factory, Baker X Derek. Uh, chasing two wheels, Dank Wheelie, 44 Teeth, Blockhead, Gears and Gasoline, Brian 66, Jake the Garden Snake, Monkey Butt. Sorry for the uh, minor delay there. You have to expect people to stop when you have uh, an older bike. I think in Ireland it happens. <laughs> but I think, yeah, basically I don't have a favorite moto vlogger. I just like moto vlogging. Um, I, I watch a lot of people. So hopefully that answers the question, including yourself, Bolt Hole. Bolt Hole. And your channel is growing well, deservedly so. Is your ultimate aim to for a proper job? Uh, no, it's it's not my ultimate aim. Um, it would be really nice for it to happen. Um, but if it doesn't happen, that's absolutely fine. I like my job um, to a degree. I like what I do. Sometimes corporate stuff can, can wear on you, as anyone who works in the corporate world will tell you. But uh, no, my ultimate aim is just to kind of... I, obviously, like I'd like to keep growing the channel. Um, and I'd like to do more stuff in bikes eventually. Um, you know, I love reviewing bikes. I love riding bikes on track, 
I like reviewing products and I, I, I hope that I do it the right way. You know, I use, for instance, tires, they get used for pretty much their useful life or, or for the year or whatever before I, I, I review them. Um, same with, for instance, the heated grips that I got off Ultimate Add-ons. Um, I'll be doing a review on them soon and they've been on my bike for 7,000, 8,000 miles because I don't think anyway that's not that's not the point basically you need you need i like to think i do things right so i'd like to think maybe in the future i'd get more opportunities to do that but ultimate aim full time i mean if it happened i would be the happiest person alive but if it doesn't happen it you know it doesn't happen that's that's the way life goes sometimes you can't you can't um you can't get everything you always want <laughs> i suppose is the way to put it so if it if it happens it happens and if it doesn't um I am perfectly okay with that too. So for the next question, uh, I know you said, uh, you assume I answered yes to what subscriber level, but I don't think it would be a subscriber level thing if I ever did make the decision. I think it would be literally um, the ability to support both myself and Toaster and my spending habits around bikes would be would be the goal. It'd be, I, I would have to be making close to if not exceeding what i currently make from my job to do that because it would be very unfair to me to just you know do that if it if i couldn't support myself and others i suppose is the way to put it because not that i want to be able to support toaster and so that she can retire and live a life of luxury because i want to do that but <laughs> what i mean is say for instance if if one or both of us lost their jobs i think it would be always the case that you want to be able to support the other um, or if you know I for instance got injured or you know anything so I think it it had more come down to my ability to to make money from this as a, as as a job that would be that would be the the thing and it'd have to be a consistent thing I, it couldn't be like oh I hit it for one month and oh I'm giving up my job it'd have to be okay I've been able to hit that number for six months now I can give up my job that would be what it'd have to be dream motorcycle um you're looking at it. <laughs> That is that is my dream. It was my dream. It is. I love. I absolutely. I, I know some people don't believe me. I think I absolutely adore that bike. I just love it. Um, days like today, it is honestly the perfect little like pop into town bike. I just love it. Um, but dream dream motorbike. It's probably still the FTR 1200. Um, but I don't. I don't have one. Is the problem I've too varied the taste. Um, the new Suzuki GSXX. 1000 GT, which the name is too long, lads, rename it. That would definitely be a dream replacement for the CBF. Um, FTR 1200, like I said. And I would also love, still love the new Hayabusa. Um, yeah, too, too many to name, really. If I, And I don't think I could pick one. Um, that's the problem. I, I, I don't know how I'd pick one. But if... <laughs> If you were holding me over a bed of dynamite and said, if you don't pick now, I'm going to blow you up and all your bikes up. Dream motorcycle, if I had to pick one. Ooh. It's such a bloody toy. Probably the FTR 1200, because I feel like I could tour on that with the right kit. I could definitely bring it on track. Um, and I could just cruise around like this. So I think the FTR 1200 remains my kind of dream bike at the, at the moment. Now, you've got your blood, all right? <laughs> Don't ask me those hard questions. And then lastly from um, Flinch, who is the Flinch Moto Vlogs. Give him a follow on YouTube as well and Instagram and all that stuff. I'll leave, I'll leave links for everyone who wants them down in, in, um, in the comments somewhere. Uh, he asks, do you have an aesthetic goal you're trying to reach with your channel? Uh, what's your favorite tractor? Um, do I have an aesthetic goal? In a way, yes. When I mentioned about uh, gears and gasoline, that's who I'd, I'd really like to emulate, is that level of production quality. Obviously, there's years in that. They have a full team working on stuff. So is that ever possible? I don't know, because I, I don't know what I ever bring on other people onto this sort of thing. I just like doing it myself. It's fun for me. Um, but yes, I, I suppose in the long run, I would like to get to a level of production and, and, and beautifulness that the guys in gears and gasoline have. And my favorite tractor, um, the only one I've driven recently uh, was a fairly new John Deere. But if I had to have a, like, my favorite one, it would probably be one of the, the vintage Fords. I think they're Fords. Yeah, the blue ones. 
um, I love them. They're really cool and I'd love to have one just, if I owned somewhere like this just to pot around on, I would <laughs> absolutely pick that one. Uh, I bet you weren't expecting me to actually answer that question seriously, but uh, yeah, there you go. Definitely one of the vintage Ford ones. And do you wear trendy flannel shirts or farm supply flannels also from the flinch? Um, if I was to wear flannel at all, uh, it would be farm supply ones because th I would imagine they'd be a lot more tough. And if you were to look in my wardrobe, you'd see all of my jeans and most of my t-shirts and stuff are covered in oil and rips and stuff because I I'm never not doing stuff in my clothes. <laughs> so definitely the farm supply ones. Um, that, would be, that would be my pick. Um, anyway, let's get back on the road to finish this video. So a massive thank you to um, everyone who did submit questions for that. And, and this it doesn't just have to be a patron thing. I'm going to try to do a fairly regular patron Q&A. And where I got this idea from, when I say I watch everyone, was uh, Baker X Derek. I really liked that he was doing it. And I, I, I can't remember my patron to be XD actually, but I should be if I'm not. Um, and that's kind of, yeah, that's where the idea came from. So if it's something you'd like me to do more of, if you'd like to know more, drop drop questions in the in the comments. Uh, if you're on Patreon, drop questions on Patreon. It's you know I'm I am an open book about pretty much everything. There are some things that uh, I I'm, I just don't want to talk about yet, uh, just because it's easier not to. So then for the inevitable questions as well, uh, what is the new helmet? It's an LS2 Storm that I picked up in Freeman Motorcycles and so far I really like it so obviously I'm not going to comment on more than that right now because uh, it's too new but uh, I will obviously be doing a review on it at some point in the future uh, who knows Who knows how long but for now it seems like a comfy helmet uh, not too noisy and all that stuff so let's see how we got on with it but if you watched thank you very much for watching if uh, you enjoyed this Q&A um, whether you're a patron or not Please do let me know in the comments. I do. I love. I love reading the comments. It's, I've said it before. It's part of why I do YouTube. So uh, please do let me know uh, your thoughts down there. And uh, if you do have any extra questions, um, also leave them in the comments, and I'll, I'll address them at a later time. But anyway, uh, very special thank you to my patrons, both for your questions and for your support of the channel. Uh, it does. It does mean an absolutely colossal amount to me um, and I don't know can I ever get across how much but it's it's a lot because I'm not really good with words and stuff oh I completely forgot to answer the one actually about um, what the bolt hole biker about asked me about being seen in public so I'll address that really quickly uh, have I been recognized yes I've been recognized and how did I love it uh, it, it depends uh, if someone just walks up to me and talks normally I mean that's fine I'm actually a shy person <laughs> in person I, I know a lot of people don't uh, uh, believe me, but maybe some people who have met me in person can confirm that. Like until I until I talk to you for a few minutes, I'm generally quite quiet and pooping myself from talking to a new person. But um, I, I love meeting the people who watch the channel. If that if that makes sense. So do I love being recognised? If they want to talk about you know the channel and talk about bikes and stuff, absolutely. I love that. I don't love just because I get recognized because um, uh, despite the fact I make videos on YouTube I have no desire to ever be famous I like I like being able to go out and fly under the radar that's uh, I have always been someone even in school uh, who I just like to be left alone to be honest that's uh, you know that's my thing but at the same time if you are a subscriber to the channel and you want to watch and you want you see me and you want to talk to me then please do make sure you come over and say hello because um, I would be upset to think that someone was afraid to approach me and talk to me. So there you go. That's that is the uh, the answer to to the question. I hope. I hope that's a, a succinct answer, a sensible answer, an answer that makes sense. Anyway, apologies for the long rambling ending. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Adios. Outro crew, what do you think of the colours of my new helmet? I've uh, I've always been a, a louder colour person, and generally I've not been able to get louder colour things. Um, like, they don't make male bike gear in loud colours. What was that person doing? Interesting. Were they actually trying to go around the circle? You don't need to go around the circle, that. Anyway, um, so it was very pleasing to me when I turned up to Freeman 
with a broken helmet. I went upstairs to look at helmets and there was this LS2 with uh, these absolutely popping colours. These things burn your eyes out of your eye holes. So uh, very pleased with the colours and um, thank you very much to Freeman for for uh, having them in stock. But yeah, well anyway, outro crew, what do you think of the colours? I like them. I like them. I hope you do too. Oh yes, and where I was coming at the end of this video is to get lunch in at the Bula Bus. As always at weekends. I do love me a bit of lunch in the Bula Bus at weekends. <laughs> you can't beat it, honestly. Give it a go. Give it a go.